Hi, thanks for gardening with me. I'm Melissa and today I'm going to be taking you around as I do just a little maintenance in the yard. I've got a few little things that I need to tidy up. Uh, this is the very beginning of August so come along with me and just kind of see what I do in a day. So the first thing I'd like to get accomplished today is to clean up this flower bed. I'm going to clean up all of the um, blooms off of the hookara that Daphne I already treated this morning so hopefully we'll get some results coming with that I don't want to cut back the branches but I do need to get in there and see if those branches are brittle and if so then I'll have to cut those all off um, other than that I have a few hosta leaves that need to be cut back um, there's just leaves that need to be cleaned up in there and um, mostly just the spent blooms from the hosta that's sticking up there and that Euonymus needs to be trimmed up a bit. So that's all for that flower bed. I also have this hosta, which um, is getting pretty fried by the sun right now. So I'm going to cut that up and clean that up a bit. And um, the lily of the valley here, I'm going to just go right ahead and cut that. And then back. this little flower bed here, I also put in with that one whenever I do the maintenance. Um, it just has a little bit of leaves that need to be cleaned up. Some spit flowers from the hosta. Um, that's really just about it in that flower bed. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work there and show you what this looks like after. So I want to talk to you about hosta for a minute because there are so many different varieties of hosta and I really do love them. Everything from things that'll take a little bit more sun to things that need 100% shade. Um, these are a little more sun tolerant. Um, they, I did have some in this bed that needed more shade and they just crisp right up in the middle of the summer. I used to have an ornamental pear tree here that we took out. So I'm trying to nurse these along and um, see if they can keep them in this spot until this blood good Japanese maple that I have here grows up a bit more and gives it some more shade. I also have a viburnum that will get um, a lot taller too and shade these plants. But in the meantime, I just go in and um, just cut away the leaves that are scorched up or burnt, usually the, the ones on the outside. And um, if you'll clean it up a little bit, it will make it look a lot more fresh for the rest of the season. Also, I don't love the uh, flowers on hostas. Um, I have to say though that when you cut them and they and put them in a jar, they make a beautiful bouquet. But um, the bumbles really, really, really love them. So I try to keep them in for the pollinators. So that being said, um, this hosta, it is extremely washed out. And that's what happens um, as the sun hits them the color fades from them. So even the blue hosta that are super, super blue in the spring, they get really faded out just about now. And here we have Lily of the Valley, which they are beautiful in the springtime. Um, you'll have to Google it. They have the prettiest little flowers with a really nice scent. However, <laughs> they are very, um, they just spread like wildfire and they spread by a taproot. So they spread across the top of the soil. Um, I didn't think that I would mind so much if they did um, because the leaves of them do look like a hosta leaf, but I don't want them to take energy from anything else around them. So I'm trying to keep them in check with still keeping them in my garden because I do like how they look, um, especially like I said in the spring and then towards the summer they just get kind of fried so you want to um, just cut them back and as long as they've had plenty of time to uh, send some food back into those roots they'll be fine the following year. So it's about that place in the video where I just about cut my finger off. Um, I took take out a big chunk of the corner of my finger. So I stopped um, 
planting and messing around that day. Um, I did learn a few valuable lessons though. Uh, one is to slow down when I'm deadheading. Um, just take my time and enjoy what I'm doing at the time that I'm doing it instead of just trying to rush through it and always be sure where my finger placement is. Um, that hurt, it bled like crazy. So quit, uh, quit for that day, now I'm back. Um, today I want to get started on this island right here. I had added quite a few things in here this year. I wanted to transition over from it being just really beautiful in the spring to it having more um, interest just throughout the whole year. So I've added a lot of daylilies in here um, that my friend Leatrice gave me, uh, which I think are just absolutely beautiful. Uh, today I have a couple other daylilies that I'm going to be planting in here, um, but these are bare root. I got them from Tulip World and I got them at like 80% discount. So um, this one is called Rosie Returns Daylily and I'll put a picture on the screen of, of all these bulbs that I'm going to be planting today. Um, this is like a pink daylily with a yellowish kind of a center and the height gets to be 14 to 16 inches, um, which um, you know isn't very tall. So I'm going to have that in the front. I think I'll put that kind of in front of the hydrangea um, because those colors I think will play off really well together. And then I also have this one, it's called um, Pink Stripes, which if you can imagine, it's pink stripes. Um, but this is also 14 to 16 inches. So um, I'll get that planted in here today as well. I also have some anemone in here and these are red with um, a black center. And I don't normally plant this vibrant of a red, but I kind of wanted to just add some punch <laughs> to this bed. And that's a shorter, um, shorter plant, uh, let's see, 10 to 12 inches. So uh, those will definitely be towards the front. Uh, I also have some coneflower. This is beautiful, look at that. This is a double coneflower um, and it has more of a, a peachy pink kind of a look to it. I'm pretty excited about that. The great thing about, day, about um, coneflower is they spread, they spread by seed, they also just get bigger and um, they give you a really nice punch of color. Uh, this will grow to be 18 to 24 inches wide, so up to two feet wide, and the height will be 26 to 30 inches tall. So um, just over two feet tall with this. So I think this will be a beautiful addition to um, kind of the front here. And then I also have these Cheyenne Spirit. I don't know if that'll focus. If not, then um, I'll, I'll bring it up closer so you can see. The great thing about the Cheyenne Spirit is that um, it has all kinds of different colored coneflowers coming out of the same plant. So everything from purple to red to orange is coming off of the same plant. And uh, these are both Cheyenne Spirit. And you can see this one has started out as like a really kind of pinky red and it's changed to this peach kind of a color and then the cone gets a little more exaggerated. The uh, pollinators love coneflowers so it's a great addition to your garden. Um, and I'm going to plant those more towards the front as well. I have some blanket flower that I will um, show you. I don't know if you can see on the screen, but it's right here. And um, they are very, very similar. So uh, they're, uh, the flower is similar on them, but the, uh, the foliage is different. Um, but those have more of a, a spiky flower where this, the foliage kind of goes up with the flower as well. So um, I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna get these planted. I also have a lot of debris that has fallen out of this tree. Um, this kind of stuff that's kind of just scattered about everywhere. So I'm gonna clean that up. And then um, after I get these planted, I'll kind of show you around what this bed looks like. It doesn't look great right now because um, it's just the season that it's in and um, there's not a whole lot in bloom here right now except for the hydrangea. I do have some coleus that are pretty in here and some coral bells or, or uh, hugra that are pretty, but those are new that are in here um, to this year, so they're not very big. Um, so other than that, there's really not a lot in bloom right now. I do have some uh, Sedum Autumn Joy that is about ready to flower. If the deer will quit eating them, then um, I'll get some flowers on those. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started planting and bring you along to show you what that looks like. So I wanted to give you a quick look at what I'm going to be using as an aid when I'm planting my uh, flowers. I never just dig a hole and put a plant in it. I am always working on trying to improve my soil. So this is a soil builder. Um, it's called Bumper Crop from Master Nurseries. I get this at Straters. And then um, I also use organic Biotone Starter Fertilizer whenever I plant 
anything. Um, I highly recommend that you use a starter fertilizer when you do plant. Um, it's actually really good for the roots to give them a nice fresh sound start. Um, just gets them really going nice and strong in the hole that you plant them in. Um, you put it directly in the soil and it comes in contact with the roots. So um, not sure exactly how that goes or the science behind it, but um, it works really well for me and I just highly recommend you use some kind of a starter fertilizer um, when you do plant any kind of a crop or any kind of a flower or a tree, anything for that matter. Anything. And before I can plant anything, I have to move away the mulch and then um, move away any of the landscaping fabric that would still be here from the previous owner and um, just dig the hole. And so you want to dig the hole that's wider than what you need it to be because you don't want your new plant to just be sitting in a bowl. You want the soil around it to be nice and loose so that the roots have room to go and spread out, but you don't want it to be any deeper than it was originally in the pot. It's not root bound at all. It is a little bit dry, so definitely could use some good watering. So I put the soil back on there and then I'll add some of my bump crop. a bare root um, you want to put it, look for the stem and put that side up this stem is a little mushy which makes me nervous so I'm not sure if this is going to do well or not but I'm going to plant it and hope for the best and this one gosh I don't know about this one either I don't know what bare root day lilies are supposed to look like, but anything bare root that I've ever planted before does not look like that. Hopefully they will live, but I have to say I'm skeptical. So these plants that I have dug up, I am going to plant them elsewhere. So the good thing about these geraniums is uh, you can transplant them super, super easy. And you may have seen before where people will take the roots and kind of spread them apart, tickle them or whatever to um, loosen them up. That's not necessary unless the plant is extremely root bound. And what I mean by root bound is when plants are in their pot too long, the roots will start circling around the outside of the pot. And um, that stresses the plant out 
and so you kind of want to avoid that. So when you are shopping for your plants, take it out of the pot and take a look at the roots. And in this area here, I have a coral bell that I planted very, very early in the spring. I moved it from someplace else, I'm not sure where, but I planted it too close to this hosta, and I did that before the hosta came up. So it's not really getting any light at all, and it's not doing any good being hidden underneath this hosta. So I uh, went ahead and picked that out, and I'm gonna move it elsewhere in the garden. And this is the area that I'm gonna be planting all the anemones and they're beautiful with the black, uh, the red flower with the black center. And with anemones, you plant them the pointed side down, and um, you can kind of tell if you look at it which end goes up. So instead of digging a hole for each one of those little bulbs, I just kind of dug a bigger area out and then planted them in a mass right there. Um, I got a coral bell that I had under here moved. I planted the anemone kind of in a drift right around here, which um, that'll be cute. Those coleus are annuals, so those aren't going to be there next year. So if I need to think of different plantings there, I definitely can. Um, I cleaned up most of the leaves in the fallen debris, but there's still some in there. Um, cut back a few things. Got the double cone flower planted right there which is, I think, just so beautiful. Love that addition to the garden. And over here we have the Cheyenne Spirit Coneflower, and those um, I just think are gonna fill in that area really nicely. Now, um, I did mention when we first moved in here, there was nothing planted in this bed, but she did put down a bunch of landscaping fabric, so I 
think that I've got most of it up in most areas, but if there ends up being some around that plant that's going to keep it from spreading, I'll have to dig that up and, and move that. But um, I just think that that'll look just really pretty right there. And then when we come around here, I have this cone flower, which is, um, it started out being like a very vibrant orange and it has uh, faded to this really peachy orange that I absolutely love. And as you can see, it has a nice seed head on it here. So I'm just gonna leave that and let the seeds just kind of do their thing here and um, let that spread. Kind of like what these bluebells have done, which I think that's what they're called bluebells. I hate it. <laughs> um, I was warned when I put it in there that they spread, but the flowers, when I put them in, were so beautiful. I'm like, well, I don't mind if they spread, but the thing is, is they flower once and they're done, and then you're left with this. So I'll probably spend the next two years trying to get those out of there. So I am still learning, my friends. Every single year, I definitely learn more in the garden. And then here we have the beautiful dahlias which are just doing their thing. Get that one ready to open and a few more buds here and there. So that's really pretty. Um, this is that orange um, daylily that I was telling you about that I need to move. So I'm not gonna cut the stalks off of those. So that'll remind me where they're at. Um, I'm not gonna move those today, but I'll probably get in here um, sometime this week and move them when I have something else that I can put there. I was thinking, a nice um, white hydrangea would look really good right there. And this is the garden where I first started out, uh, where I cut my finger. Um, it's looking really good, coming right along. Um, it does have some beautiful flowers on the back side here. And these are double impatience and Gerber daisies. Ugh, I just think they're just so beautiful. So that's it. Thank you so much for gardening with me. God bless and have a great week. Mm -hmm.